The suppression of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the Narcotics Division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, they fill cabinets. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Coloradians, and everyone that's smart enough to listen from the outside. It's one of the most amazing plants we've ever discovered. The pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a cup. Please! I got really fucked! Tell me about JT getting that dewy in the Hamptons. <laughs> Uh, I feel was, like if I was a celebrity, why like, are you driving? Yeah, they didn't. Apparently, the cop didn't know who he was, though. How do you not, do you know, not know? Because he, he was twenty-two, and I guess Justin Timberlake is out of his circle. I don't know. I found that kind of weird, but he is twenty-two, and in sync hasn't been a thing. And yeah, but JT's he, been a thing. I know, but like ten like, years ago, more. Do you remember the epic boob slip? Like even somebody at twenty-two yeah. has to remember I mean, that. That literally was twenty-two years ago, Chris. <laughs> So they would be like, in but the he was an actor for a while too. He kind of blew somehow up. Somehow JT has to come up on the. You would that. think, be like his. You probably j- t- jug or tug it to his wife. Somebody was it? They were. <laughs> he looked ham boned. <laughs> yeah, he did. His eyes were still glazed over. He he had been drinking. He had had a few. But why teenies. do you not have a driver? You're worth a hundred million fucking dollars. Or why do you not yeah. Uber? Well, if you're in the Hamptons, I imagine it's all car services. You know, like, yeah. I just don't get it. Like, when I saw that, I was like, how do, like, I don't even, if I'm not even rich, if I just get, like, middle tier, I'm getting a fucking driver. That's the first thing I'm doing. Yeah. Well, whatever. Kind of like, what was that Saturday night walking back to the place in Aspen? We saw those two pullovers. Yeah. Those are definitely Deweys. Yeah. The cops were out in full of force. And it's like the town is eight blocks by eight blocks. Like, <laughs> yeah, why the they, fuck are you driving? They, yeah. On the bit, it's a wine week. And though. if you stay at one of those nice hotels, I'm sure they can They take all you have any, car yes, services. Electric cars. But yeah, JT's a fucking idiot. <laughs> I was like, why are you Was dri- he way over the limit? I didn't see that. I hadn't he seen his blow. BAC, but uh, I saw his eyes in that picture which is probably the smartest thing he did not only legally but also just for his own self so that BAC doesn't get posted because I bet it was high either way y'all ready to rock and roll yeah in three two one welcome back ladies and gentlemen to the last episode of the week I am your host, Kip Wilson. This is Stoned Appetit, and I, my brain is still not firing on all cylinders. To my left, I got CB. CB, how are you today, Bubba? I'm good. I'm good. I'm enjoying a, a nice little uh, recuperation. I think I'm back. I'm fully back, uh, ready for the weekend that lies ahead. There's a few events going on. Yeah, it's a big weekend ahead. Um, rolling through Rhino, our friends from Groovy Gravy is hosting the Seed Stash event. We are partnering up for the best bites on Larimer from Saturday from 2 to 5. You can get your tickets through our newsletter. Uh, they're $10. There's only 100 of them, but they get you bites from new restaurants on the block, staples, pop-ups, and then you get to vote on the best restaurant all that plus pride events. We've got pride events in Rhino on Saturday that will coincide with rolling through Rhino. And Sunday, the big festival and parade. It's going to be a kick-ass weekend. Also, they got the Highland Street Fair oh, on nice. Saturday from 10 to 7. And widespread panic is in town. So if you perhaps maybe kiss your sister or love a good glorified cover band, this is the band for you. Are the Stones in? So they it's... are playing as you're listening. To this. Panic is opening for the Stones tonight. I will not be there because I'm fucking exhausted. I need a few days. I've got a ton of work this weekend. I just need a few nights. What's the number? How much would you pay for one of those Stones tickets? Like a 200 bucks max. To be in the nosebleeds? I think that there's some standing room only on the pit floor as well that are available, but I still don't have the juice to get to there. What about you, Eve? Are you a big Stones fan? I mean, they're fine. I just don't know if I'm enough of a they're fan. Fine. To You're like go, the I don't know, can fine. they still perform well? Are their voices still good? Like, I don't care if you have like a legacy, if you suck at performing, like I'm not just going to go to say I, I saw the stone. Yeah, I, 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 I think they're bringing the hammer. That last I album's assume so. Bad. I think it'd be cool, but yeah, I probably wouldn't spend over like 200 Okay, if you could go back and see any band in oh their boy. prime, who would it be? I'm just curious. I don't know. Don't be shy. Maybe 
Aretha Franklin, like okay. in her heyday, okay. would be really good, or like Nat King Cole or something. Okay. Interesting on the Nat King Cole. I would have gone Grateful Dead with Jerry, <laughs> perhaps Queen would be a Ooh, cool one. Queen. Oh, Queen. fuck, yeah. I think Queen could see them in Barcelona or something. Ooh, like, I bet that nice would have been Nice roll a of heater. the TH there right there. <laughs> Just like the king. Um, y'all, we have a great episode. If y'all tuned in because y'all thought we were a food-centric podcast, well, joke's on you. Every month, we actually host a draft just to kind of get the competitive juices flowing between the three of us. Last month, we did Best Mothers on TV in honor of Mother's Day. And since we just celebrated Father's Day, this one we're going to do best fathers in TV or movies so that we don't have as many repeats of conversation. We've included movies into the mix. But uh, once a month we do the draft. Um, You can vote on who you think won on our social media page at stoned underscore appetite. And we pick one winner to win a $50 gift card from our sponsors. Um, Speaking of sponsors, let's give a shout out to our friends over at Pine Melon. If you don't know, you need to know. They do a lot of great things in the community. In addition to pairing or partnering up with 200 plus farmers and purveyors across Colorado, they also have done some really cool things for things like Juneteenth. They did um, 100% of proceeds going to um, black farming communities and operations. I believe there's a company called Farm First Foundation that they donated proceeds to yesterday. They do fun stuff like this for Pride Month. They're doing foundation or excuse me, fundraising for that as well. But in addition to that, they have great supplies of meats, veggies, fruits, Hell, they've got rice and fresh bread from the area as well. No matter what you may be shopping for, they've got you covered over at Pine Melon, and they'll deliver it to your door. Use promo code STONED and Chris. They've upped the ante. $60. $60 in free groceries for first-time users. Just use promo code STONED, and that'll get you where you're trying to go. Um, and you don't have to worry about going to the grocery store, getting the kids in and out of the car. Maybe the car seats are hot because you've been, it's been baking all day. Alleviate all of those headaches and issues by ordering online and having them drop it off at your door. Speaking of uh, eliminating issues, we would be remiss if we didn't give a shout out to our friends over at Seed Money Consulting. If you're a small business owner, maybe you're the person that's wearing all the hats for your company. Bring in the professionals. They work with small to medium-sized businesses to not only help them during tax season, but throughout the year to make sure all of your ducks are are in a row, whether it's quarterly filings, whether it's handling payroll, whether you're just trying to get your financial advisory tips to make sure you're not um, pissing away the money that may be hanging out in a uh, just a business bank account. They can definitely help you no matter your situation. They're Denver-based. They work with companies across the hospitality space, the cannabis space, content creation, and every other entity and industry. There's no reason you should be losing sleep or wearing all of these hats, leaving money on the table. Reach out to our friends at Seed Money Consulting. They'll be here to help you. All right, y'all ready to do a little die of destiny? Yeah. Is, is that what you're saying, move this? Oh, no, I was going to say, are you going to charge your phone? Because I'm taking that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Well, I need it for the, the draft, but at the same time, I just, it's okay. Everyone, we're going to roll the dies of destiny presented by our friends at Bird Call. Lois goes first. Lois goes first and picks the, or Lois picks the order, not goes first. So let's roll them out. Lowest. Four. Fuck. One for Chris, three for E, four for Kip. Chris is picking the order. What order are we going with today, CB? I think we're going to go moi, and then Kip, Ooh. and then we're going to give Eve like the, the snake. snake around. Let oh. her let her throw two out at once. The old wrap around. All right. So Chris, you're starting out the gates. I'm guessing you must have a 1-1 one, one that you feel is just an alpha and the omega. So let's hear who's your first pick in fathers, I guess we'll say best fathers or fathers you liked, whatever. the we've. This was kind of that verbiage that we had an issue with in the, the Mother's Day draft. Yes. But for our Father's Day draft, you can obviously justify why you chose them. Please try not to pander too terribly hard because we know you like to do that. 
That's a lie. Uh, so my first pick is going to be George Bonks from Father of the Bride. Oh, nice. Steve Martin. I mean, like... That's a good I one. Mean, because, album on short list. Because he's just, like, he's so good. And, like, especially when he goes into the grocery store and has the meltdown, just wanting the, the hamburger buns or the hot dog buns, where he's like, I just want six. Why do I have to pay for two extra? I mean, the man is on the edge. And then when he takes the sleeping pill, like... He's very relatable, and he also deals with, like, a house full of chaos. Uh, and through every movie, he actually ages well. I think that's a movie that ages well in terms of fatherhood. And I think there may even be a movie or show called Fatherhood. And I still f- think Father of the Bride, like, he's so loving. He's a doting father. I think that's a great one one. That was definitely on my short list. So, son of a bitch. Um, it's my turn. I'm going with Andy Griffith. This is a relation between two, two different things. Shut up, Eve. Was Eve going to get that? No, this is such a, like, an obvious. Yeah, but it was a show I watched with my father growing up, but there was not a You know, like he was trying to teach and still principal and his son, having to also deal with fucking Barney Fife on a regular basis, Gomer Pyle and the rest of the idiots in town. So he was juggling a lot, but he still made time to deal with Opie. And I feel like, I can't remember if I actually quoted, and I won't tip picks, but like Happy Days with, what's his name? Uh, Richie Cunningham, uh, the famed actor or famed producer, whatever his name is, Ron... Thank you. He was the kid in the show, but it was like, even in black and white, like the point still resonated and you could feel the love and the warmth, even as someone that was definitely too young to actually appreciate the show. I feel like Andy Griffith was just one that was really a solid one. And although we don't like pigs on this podcast, he is a sheriff or I would appreciate having in my town. Good job. Thanks, Eve. I'm surprised you didn't at least give me an attaboy because you're like the black and white cinema person. Well, when streets. he said Father of the Bride, I thought he meant the original for a second. And I was like, right on. And then he No, said, I don't mean the original. <laughs> the original 1950. The black and white one. Yeah. I was no, like, all right. <laughs> Not that one. Yeah. He was like, oh, Chris has got taste. <laughs> Who was That's that actor in that? Um, Nobody cares. No, Nobody he, would know that. Him and, yeah, him and Catherine Hepburn were together. I can't remember his name right now. Okay. He's in a lot of stuff. Anyway. Clark Gable? No. Uh, anyways, uh, Eve looks focused over so here. So Eve has the third and the fourth pick, which worries me a little bit. Well, let's see what she comes I, up I with. I think you're safe. So well, yeah. I'm going to go with John Ritter, who played Paul Hennessy on Eight Simple Rules. That you remember show that? was great. It was I a great show. It really was. And his wife was the one from... Uh, Married with Children. Married with Children and Sons, Sons of Anarchy. Anarchy. Yeah. I, I felt like, and he just died in real oh, life. So I remember that. That was like, so. The show actually was like addressed it as well. Yep. And like the grandfather came in. And that one was kind of in that camp of like shows like, it was pre Big Bang Theory when like, it wasn't super corny to still be watching CBS like laugh track TV shows. Yeah. I enjoyed that one. That's a good call. And it breaks my heart that he's I not know. with us. God, that was so terrible. Um, and then I'm going to do Hal from Malcolm in the Middle, Brian Cranston. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good one. Because he puts up with a lot of shit, and I, but I still think he, he loves all his kids. He loves his wife. He and Lois were He's definitely a good dad. always on the brink of like having a connection sure. fit or like being put in the loony bin, yeah. which I, Lois should have been on my short list for Mother's Day, and Hal is a perfect pick for this one because we were a house full of deviant children. And yeah, like he would lose his patience, but he'd always go to bat for his family first. But and that's man, what you, he was a he was a solid father figure. He was on the verge of a breakdown every episode. Oh yeah, I feel like my dad may have been in the same camp on a regular basis. That checks out. Yeah, I mean we were terrible people. Um, all right, so it's on me. Yep. All right, I'm switching to movies here, and I'm going with Robin Williams and Miss Doubtfire. Fuck. Fuck you. You gotta know you gotta know his name, Daniel Hillard. Daniel Hilliard. Hillard. Mr. God. Hillard? Hillard. Fuck. The things you do for your children and to be with your children when maybe, you know, like obviously he was kind of a grown he was a grown child rather than an adult. 
But when you take someone's kids away and you like see that emotional like heartbreak, and I'm not mad at Sally Field mm. or at Pierce Brosnan, but for a minute there, I wasn't a big fan of Pierce Brosnan until like he saved the world in Golden Eye and you know things like that. But Daniel Hillard, Robin Williams, missed out fire. I feel like he just what he would do for his kids. He would walk through fire. He would happily put on a mask or a wig. He would dress up as, you know, a 70-year-old woman every day just to have that opportunity. And, you know, even at the end of the movie, no spoilers, but Sally Fields even comes around to it. And, I mean, it gets me a little teary-eyed just thinking about it because when he was, like, when he got figured, when he was found out, but also, like, when the court, like, tried to take the kids away, and he was like, please, they are my heir. They are my everything. Like, it brings, you know, like, that's what everybody wants in a parent. And, I mean, I can honestly say that I got that from both sides, father and mother growing up. But at the same time, it was just unbelievably, it was just a warm movie, and it was in the middle of his kind of, like, peak heyday. It was, like, late 80s until the late 90s, and I felt like he just... He did this beautifully. Yeah. And and in this day and age when everyone is so mad about everything, I don't see how that movie would be able to be recreated. And there's only one person that could do it, and it would have been Robin. So shout out to Daniel Hillard. Um, you did anything you could to spend time with your kids. And I think that is a uh, that's a really um, – it's a nice homage. So that's my second pick, and I'm glad that it got Chris all frazzled right there. So now he's going back to the drawing board. No, I got my next one. You got it's your next one? one? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think it's you. You got the old yeah. reach around. I'm going to go with Mr. Levenstein from the American Pie series. <laughs> I mean, what a gem. Eugene like, Levy? Like, I mean, if you were if you were a high school kid just battling everything, and he was always there to help you out, and he knew what was up. I mean, honestly, like, he was so good. I mean, that is a good call. We'll I mean, just tell your mom we ate it. I mean, he was one of those guys that, like, went to bat for you so hard. But he was also kind of like, he got a little uncomfortable in how close he was to relating to his son. He's like, you know, it was just a little bit awkward. But, like, you give him a little bit of that grace so that if you're not, if you're one of those helicopter parents your kid's going to end up being a huge piece of shit in college or whatever. And it seems like Jason Biggs was, he had a good head on his shoulders. He just couldn't get out of his own way. And his dad understood stood that because he was also the, awkward. The swelling should subside in three to five days. Hey, doc, <laughs> do you got anything? Oh my God, it was great. Loved it. Oh, okay, that's a good one. Well, you get two of them, Chris. Oh, I do? Yeah. All right, so, I mean, this one might catch a little beef. Uh, you know, we're looking at pre-slap days, but I'm going to go with Will Smith in the pursuit of happiness. That one uh, made Chris me cry. Chris Gardner. Yeah. That one I made mean, me cry a lot. I mean, because like he was just shit on constantly. He was always trying to provide for his son and like, yeah, it was tough, but he never like lost sight of it. I think that that's a great, you know, and it's a true story. Yeah. So a shout out to, the real father, and I can't remember his name in the movie, but at the same time, like when they're sleeping together in the bathroom of the subway in 1980 San Francisco, like that's brutally heartbreaking, but what he would do for his kid while also raising his son a proper way, um, I think that's a really good answer. Chris Gardner. Chris Gardner. So shout out to Mr. Gardner, but you know, Will Smith and Jaden also, I think that was his kind of come out as an actor. Um, they, that was a really good movie and it still brings tears to my eyes to this day. Cause like when he gives the $5, but really didn't have the $5 and then his like partner or his wife left him because he had, it just like, he couldn't catch a break. And then, you know, it brings a little, I get a little for Clint. Oh no, that one made it. me tear up. Yeah. Uh, full, full stop. That's a good one. E. Oh, it's me again. Shit, yeah. shit, shit, shit. Oh, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go back-to-back -back movies, and this one I laugh about. I'm doing Liam Neeson from Taken. Okay. <sighs> because. Okay, yeah. <laughs> sure. I mean, you would do. I will you, find you. I will find you. Um, <laughs> my dad watched this movie right before my sister went to study abroad in Europe, and he was like, he said he was like, I didn't sleep right for a week before she left. 
And it's not like my father could have ever have done any of those things, but the things that parents would go through to make sure their kids are safe. And then I feel like this, like they spun seven shittier movies off of this one. And Liam Neeson made a whole like lifestyle pivot of just being a badass, just being a badass. And so I think that, you know, that just quantify or like, the the body trail, you know, the body count or whatever you want to... That's pretty good. It's a good one. So give me Brian or Liam Neeson from Taken as my third pick. Eve? Okay. Um, I'm going to do Chevy Chase from Man of the House with Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Oh, shit. With the, uh, when they're in Seattle and they join the little... Uh, Native the, American yeah, tribe. Yeah, he's, that movie's so fucking good. Yeah, I he's don't. The stepdad. He's, he's the, the stepdad. Dad so he up. comes in to the shitty little teenager. Which to be on the teenager side, I don't know how long after her divorce or whatever she started dating him. I think it was kind of quick, and then he like moves in. So I'm on the kids side, but still, he's just like a dorky like stepdad trying his best and like yeah. Wow, wow. You know, he had a rough go. He had a rough go. And then some people tried brick. to kill the kid, and then he's like trying to help, you know, all yeah. that stuff. He's yeah. trying his best. For a second there, That's I was That's a tra- great call. For, I fucking love that movie. For and a second there, I was like thinking, like, wait a second. Are you talking about, like, was it Jungle to Jungle with. Uh, That's Tim Allen? Okay. That, but but it's kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he was a good dad in that. I can't remember. No, but, no he, he was, was terrible. Prick. He like, <laughs> right? He was like a business guy or something? Yeah. yeah. And, he like kept, and he had a step, or he had a wife he was about to marry, and she would like choose the cats over Mimi and he finally came around at the end but I don't yeah. think he yeah. was a great no, father but up Chevy Chase yeah, was and I think Farrah Fawcett was the <laughs> wife or his girlfriend and I, then, think, I so. think it was Farrah Fawcett you're talking about Mayor, uh, man, in the, man of the House right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. oh yeah and she had that kick ass loft that they yeah had. and the mirror God, I yeah. love that movie what I hope fucking... it still holds up I haven't seen it in a while so I mean there's probably some <laughs> It's got uh, Norm it. from yeah. Cheers is the that. other member of the tribe, and then the client. oh yeah, but like and they're Jake, building the TP. You know? uh-huh. Oh <laughs> yeah. my god, I love that movie. I almost kind of want to search that. I'm right. going to watch that later. <laughs> Was what? that a Disney movie? I think so. It Maybe. has to. Have, I'm going to check so. Disney Plus with my power. Yeah, I think it was on. Disney. Oh, that's a great pick. I may even vote for Eve. What a fucking movie! Fine. <laughs> I went too mainstream. Damn. I was just trying to think of my childhood. I'm like, what did I watch a lot? That is such a great one. Yeah. Father of the Bride was the instant, like, that one. But, all right, Eve, do you get back to back? Yep. I believe. Yeah. Are we doing four or five? I think five. we'll do five. Okay. Um, There's too many with movies and TVs to not have a five pack. I know, but I wasn't ready for movies. I'm going to do Phil Dunphy from Modern <laughs> Family. <laughs> that was not- <laughs> I was gonna do him. He's, he's so gotcha. cool. The quirky, fun, Nerdy like dad. he's so he, not he cool that he's well. cool. Yeah, yeah. But, and I feel bad for Claire because she ended up having to raise a fourth kid in some instances. But Phil was always there for his kids. Like all of them knew that he was a buoy and a rocky ocean. Like he wasn't going to tumble. And when you know rubber met the road, he did stand up for himself. Whether it took a little help from. Uh, you know, his father-in-law, Ed O'Neill, or, you know, and then the relationship, how it fostered over years. Fuck, Eve, you just went back to back. You may get my... That is one of the greatest uh, TV shows in history. Modern fan. Like, I can watch that any any night of the week. And it's usually on. Yeah, that's a good call. Um, So I had Andy Taylor from the Andy Griffith Show as my first TV and now I got to go back to TV. And we kind of talked a little bit about this on the Mother's Day draft, but we would be remiss if we didn't include this person as my fourth pick. And it's Uncle Phil. I mean, I still cry when I watch the scene when Will asks why his father doesn't love him. And then Uncle Phil like, gives him the big hug. And like, I'll start crying if I like watch that scene right now. But in addition to caring and providing for his three kids, you know, having a full time job, you know, he and Aunt Viv took in this kid from Philly who maybe, you know, beat to a different drum. And no matter what, he just loved, you know, unconditionally. And I think we would all be really upset if Uncle Phil you know, uncle to Will, but father to Carlton, Ashley, and Hillary, 
And even, was it Little Nicky was his name at the end, the youngest one they had later in the seasons? But he became a father figure for Will. And it's similar to what you said with, you know, Chevy Chase and Man of the House. Like, he may not have procreated and, like, raised his child, but he was doing his very best he could. And, you know, despite all circumstances or headaches that Will may have caused, I mean, if you don't have Philip Banks on your top-tier dad list... Like, he's got to be on there somewhere. So I have to go. I'm going back to the crying zone. Like, I need a fun one. Like, Brian from, I mean, none of mine have been fun. I got to have a fun one coming out later. But you got to have Uncle Phil somewhere in there. If you're not, you're doing this wrong. So my fourth pick, Uncle Phil, the true father figure. All right. So let's see. I'm going to go with Mac McGuff from Juno. Oh. I mean... The, I wouldn't have known his name is that. <laughs> Mac is that McGuff. Juno's dad? Yeah. Okay. I mean, the guy was a champion. with it. When his daughter, you know, get teenage pregnancy, he was always there. He always supported her. It felt like one of those, like, super liberal movies. And, like, watching... I saw Juno in the movie theaters, and it was like... We don't have those kinds of families. Like my dad would have been like so pissed if I had gotten someone pregnant or like something of that nature. And he just took it with stride. He was like, "We're gonna take care of this." Punch that bleaker kid in the dick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, no. Like he was there with her the whole time. Like he went to check on the adoptive parents. He was there at the hospital when she gave birth. Uh, he was such a good dad, and he was funny as shit. I love it. That's a good call. That's a sleeper I would not have thought of. What was his name in the movie? Mac McGuff. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now it's you my last the, one. You get the reach around. Don't forget about it. Okay. This one, I'll, I'll head to TV with this one. And I'm going to go uh, with Bert Hummel from Glee. Which one's that? He's the one whose son ended up coming out gay. Okay. I I only know the kids. I don't know the fathers, but I know the kids you're talking about. Yeah, but he was a big, he was a big, like... I never saw Glee. Big. You never even watched, like, the beginning seasons? I'm not a big sing-along guy, if that surprises you in any stretch of the imagination. Uh, But no, I mean, like, he, he was a huge football. I don't know whether he was, like, a mechanic or construction worker, but, like... You know, it was tough for him, uh, and he came around and really, like, supported his son and all that stuff. So, that's a good dad. That's okay. I I can't speak to that one, so... There'll be people out there that love Glee. It was a pretty big hit. Okay. I mean, yeah, I know it was a big hit. Like, even The Office made shows about watching Glee. That's about the the existence of my knowledge. I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to... I don't have any slides. I don't know if it's... You obviously watched the show. I did not, so I can't speak to it. But that's not a bad five-pack you got there, Chris. I'm not worried. I got to figure out. Here's my last one. And I think I'm going back to movies on this one. And this is something, I think it's a true story as well, similar to the one we had earlier that we discussed with The Pursuit of Happiness. But John Q. Denzel takes over the whole emergency room. And I think that there was some story that kind of related to this. I don't know if it's actually real life or, you know, dramatized or whatever, dramatized. But, I mean, your son has a heart attack or, you know, an enlarged heart has a, goes into a, you know, whatever, cardiac, whatever. Shocker, the hospital's not willing. Yeah, I fucking hate health insurance companies (laughs) as is, except for our friends over at Connect for Health. But at the same time, the things he goes through for his kids and the fact that he even got his, uh, I guess not victims, but the people in the ER to kind of go to bat for him, everyone except for like the hospital admin yeah. was all in. They're like, yeah, this is fucked up. Like you got screwed over. And then when his wife starts banging on the hospital door, like they got a heart. I mean, you just break down, you know? And so I think John Q, I think Archibald is his last name, but it kind of shines a light on what lower middle class and lower, 
you know, impoverished families have to deal with in terms of the haves and have nots and what you would go through or what you would do to make sure that your child is given the same chances as those that maybe are affluent or would be able to buy their way to the top of a list. He did what he could do that were within his confines to make sure his kid survived, including, spoiler alert, from 1999 or 2002 or whatever. Um, taken in the hospital hostage. Taken in the hospital and then was about to take his own life. Yeah. And then, you know, right up until. And so I just think, you know, the ultimate sacrifice is what parents, you know, would do for their children. And I think he was willing to do the most you know, permanent and ultimate sacrifice of giving his own life for his children, which I think, you know, it breaks my heart thinking about, but my father would have done the same for me. He probably wouldn't at this age. He'd be like, that fuck face can figure it out. But, you know, growing up, I think that's what everybody wanted was just a guy in their corner that would do anything and everything for them. And I think that that's a good sign of a father in in this show or in this uh, draft. So give me John Q. Archibald. Um, for Father of the Year, uh, year 2003 or whatever year that movie came out. All right, Eve. Eve, you get to wrap it Bring up. Bring us home. Let's go through your top four first. Oh. You don't I have did. to. We can write. No, them. I did John We'll go Ritter. through everyone's oh, top at five at the end. Okay. I can't um, remember all mine. I'm going to do Clark Griswold. Oh, the double Chevy, Chevy I know, I was like, Chevy again, but I thought about it. and That's He just cares call. so much for his family, like... He he's wants, a dope, but like he's not a bad dad. He just went, wants memories. You went very whimsical with today, and I <laughs> love that. And it's not that Chevy Chase is a piece of shit in real life, but a great TV I mean, yeah, dad. Yeah, but he definitely is. Yeah, yeah. That's oh, a great is. call. He's like, we're going to Wally World. We're going to Vegas. He's like, we're going to have everybody under our roof for the holidays. Like he wanted yeah. just everything. He tries a little too hard, but it's in good spirit. And if I were a kid, bastard. looking back at the vacations, I'd be like, man, my dad really, he really tried. And then he always blows up at one point and it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, he's like, he loses, he loses it, but, it, but he loses it in the name of like, you know, like. He doesn't I just yell at anyone. He just like this. yells. Yeah, he's, you know, like yeah. Wally World's closed for renovations. Yeah. He's like, we just drove from fucking Ohio or Chicago. Uh, that's a great what, what call, it, too. What was Damn. his line in Christmas when uh, when he lost it? Um, About his boss? No, no one's leaving. We're going to stay here until he brings his jolly ass down there. Down the, I don't know. I can't remember it exactly. Down the chimney the or something. Yeah. yeah. And we're yeah. going to have a ho, ho, ho. ho, ho. ho. <laughs> just fucking... That's a good one. And it covers more than just one movie or show. Oh, yeah, so that's yeah. true. You get a little range and you can pick which graphic you want to use. Because <laughs> sharing a beer with Russ after they wrecked the car, dealing with the dead gr- aunt on top of the roof uh, of, the, yeah. of the actual uh, vacation. And for those that don't remember, the European vacation definitely ranks lower on the pantheon of greatest. Yeah, I've watched that the yeah. least. But it's like, oh, look, Big Ben. Like, I quote that every time I go through a roundabout. I think of Chevy Chase when they get stuck in the middle. Oh, that's a good one, Eve. That's a really good one. I, I mean, I like mine, but yours are more playful and fun, and I like that about who you went with. All right, so let's run through the quick – Who? what were everyone's picks for today? Go through, like – all five of Chris's, all three, five of Kip's, and all the five of Eve's. I think I know mine, but... Like, you want me to say yours? Yeah, just read okay, them all Chris out so everybody knows. did Steve Martin from Father of the Bride, Eugene Levy from American Pie, Will Smith in The Pursuit of Happiness, Mac McGuff, Gino's dad, and the... I didn't get the name. The father of the gay kid in Glee. <laughs> What's his name? Bert just, Hummel. Bert Hummel, okay. You double dipped a little pride and a little movie pr- right there. Bravo, Chris. Okay. Kip Hello. did Andy Griffith, Robin Williams and Mrs. Doubtfire, Liam Neeson and Taken, Uncle Phil and John Q. And then I did John Ritter from Eight Simple Rules, Hal from uh, Malcolm, Malcolm in the Middle, Malcolm. Chevy Chase and Man of the House, Phil Dunphy from Honor Family, and Clark Griswold from... You went all movies. playful okay, in yours. Let, I'm not mad about it, but it, I didn't mean to. All right, let's yeah, go. I guess I did. What was yeah, one like that you honorable wouldn't, mentions? Yeah. Did you have an honorable mention, Eve? I briefly, I couldn't. I don't know if he was a great dad. But I briefly thought of Hook, like Robin Williams' character. Like he's an a hole in the beginning, That's but I don't know. One. I don't know if that technically because he then he flies. Well, he had to, to learn how to be a kid again. He did, and then he turns into a good father. But he still has already kind of like fucked up his kids. So I thought about that, but I was like, I don't know if you're fully a. 
Uh, but he learns. Yeah. He learns. And he does what, you know, like, I guess, you know, you grow up and you forget about that, being able to relate to your children. And he finds yeah. it later on. But at the know, same time, the that's a good one. I had Tim the Toolman Taylor, as I mentioned in the movies mm, draft. Kind of toxic. Yeah. Mm. He's a narc as well. But at the same time, the oh, 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 How's he a oh. narc? He flipped on a bunch of people with cocaine in the 80s in Detroit. Oh, you're talking about his real life. Yeah. Okay, you can't mix that. We're talking about the dad. But at the, the same dad. time, yeah, like he was also kind of, he was he was like Phil Dunphy before Phil Dunphy. But since I did bit, Jill yeah. Taylor in the last one, I omitted him. And Danny Tanner, his wife yeah. passes away full house. And he Uh-oh. raises the girls by himself. He brings in his brother-in-law to help. Joey Gladstone somehow makes Alanis Morissette go crazy and write a great song album in the 90s. Like he had all these moving pieces. And as a morning radio or TV show host, he was just doing whatever he could. But I bet that house in the Seven Sisters, he was having to make fucking bank. He should have just had a nanny to help out. But I thought Danny Taylor and Tanner, excuse me, was a good honorable mention. But I couldn't leave off John Q. I had. I had Professor Jones, Indy's dad. Uh, he didn't really raise him, though. Yeah. He was know. always there for him. No, he wasn't. Didn't he figure out he was alive when he was 18? He showed him the light. How? When? In Raiders of the Lost Ark? His son wasn't in that. Huh? You're, you're talking about... Um, You're not talking about... Uh, Fuck, Sean blanking. Connery. Okay, you're talking about Sean Connery. Yes. Oh, okay, sorry. I just heard Indiana Jones. I thought you were talking I almost him wanted to throw in his ha- kid. I almost wanted to throw in Harry Stamper from Armageddon. Oh, when he takes his own, he's like, "Take care of my girl." Well, also, like at first, he was like a dick to Ben Affleck, and then he grew to love him, and then yeah. yeah. That, that just made me think of Randy Quaid in Independence Day. But I don't know if he's technically a great dad because no, they're like struggling. Like yeah. And his kids hate him, so actually. I don't think it's enough just to be like, okay, I'm going to die for you. Like, you kind of, <laughs> I don't know though. But I, you made me think of that just now. Um, Lawrence Fishburne and Boys in the Hood, raising Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah. Gooding Jr. I didn't see that. You haven't seen Boys in the Hood? Oh. Mm-mm. You'll never want to play football in the alley ever again after watching that. Okay. Um, that sounds ominous. I had Al Bundy from Married with Children. He was pretty funny, but I don't know if he was such a, I don't know if he was a great dad. Yeah. Oh, I thought of um, Dan Connor from Roseanne. Roseanne. I mean, he, was, he was a little homophobic-ish at times, but he, he pushed through. And he there was through. also that one episode where he and Roseanne got into a little DV situation in the later seasons before she went oh. like alt-right MAGA weirdo. Like in the, like in the new in the ori- season? No, in the original there was like an episode where there was a little DV situation and I felt like, I can't remember. Oh, with Jackie, you mean? I can't remember. Jackie dated someone who beat her up. But like also the way Roseanne and Dan fought really wasn't great. Like yeah. That was the first show, I think the only show that still exists, where it's like full yelling, like full screaming, but it's also very accurate. So, but I think there was an episode, he might have like punched a wall and like him and Roseanne got into a huge fight. Yeah, and they like, like They like wrecked the living room, but I don't, he never... Like put threatened to punch her, her. I don't yeah, think, yeah. but I he did. He beat exactly. up Jackie's boyfriend. Looking back on it, we could see why he would want to, though. Yeah, she's a fucking nut job, and John Goodman's awesome. Yeah. He, like I've met and him he loves a few his daughters, times in like... New Orleans. He's a nice motherfucker. Oh yeah, I, remember, I used to go to the same grocery store, and he would like eat and drink around the neighborhood. He's like, was this before or after he lost weight? Before he lost, he was a big fella. Yeah. I went way too serious. I'm afraid I'm going to lose because people are going to be like, oh, this is more fun. Damn it. Oh, well, we'll see how it all shakes out. Yeah. Speaking of shaking out, any plans for the weekend? I know I kind of prefaced it on the early aspects. Eve, what are you doing this weekend? Anything cool? I don't know yet. You want to come to Rolling Through Rhino? Do a little Mm. pride sesh with me? Maybe. Come on. I'm fucking fun to hang out with. That's a hard no. I know. Um, so, 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 he has so, balls, though, on Saturday or something. Yeah, but like that's know. why balls are on the outside of their body. It's because they, <laughs> they regulate. Yeah. They? It's, um, to keep, it's to keep them cooler because the body's at 98 degrees. Uh-huh. So that's why you can sweat. Also, a water bottle, you're good, as, you're good to go. And I'm sure you can find some place down there with misters. I might swing out through there. Okay. Um, what are you thinking? Are you going to do some pan pan? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna swing by the Highland Street Fair. Okay, check that out since it's so close. And then 
I forgot to mention last night we went to a movie, uh, went and saw Inside Out 2. So I highly recommend that because this summer there's not really many good movies mm-hmm. coming out. I mean, Although, Twisters. Deadpool. What? Deadpool and Wolverine and Beetlejuice are what I want to see. You really want to go see Wolverine? It's Deadpool and Wolverine uh, together. Deadpool 3 to be exact. Okay, yeah. Where, and where Beetlejuice. Do you, where, Inside it. Out I, 2 was cool. And I can't wait. I don't know when it comes out. Uh, the uh, Mufasa. I wonder when that one movie comes out. I saw mm-hmm. like a. Is this animated or is this with the live action? I think action? it's like. Uh, I think it might be live action. So another Lion King, thing. About, Mufasa. Yeah. Why? There's one just about Mufasa. Oh fuck! Mufasa would have been a good pick. Eve I doesn't didn't... want to go see it. No. Don't care. <laughs> Literally no interest. <laughs> To be honest, I don't know if I want to see a movie specifically about that either, but he was a good father, and that would actually have been a good call. I I mean, he sacrificed himself to save his family. I just talked about... We didn't really have any cartoon representation this time around, despite having a large representation in the movie draft. I feel like in a lot of movies, though, the dads aren't really in a lot of them. They, like, either die or they're, like, off screen. I can't please Eve with any of my movie choices. It's okay. It is okay. I mean, it's okay. It's all right, Eve. I mean, maybe one day you'll be as like fine tuned as us, cinematic movies. St- I like, know, as classy as Inside Out Two. Maybe someday. Yeah, maybe if Inside Out Two was in black and white, and maybe made, <laughs> yeah, right, made with like hey. anti-Semitic, you know, like undertones, clay, like yeah. claymation or like, something, like the nineteen forty cartoons that Eve liked. Yeah, because you're not even a fan of Inside Out. I'm not. What what is it that you don't like about it? I thought it was boring, and didn't really bring much to it. I just thought I was like, oh, that's it. It okay. I won't get into it, but it's not boring. <laughs> I mean, I didn't care for it. Didn't do it. Didn't do anything for me emotionally. I just watched it, and I was like, okay. Oh, that's so funny. I love it. I love it. Well, hey, if y'all are out and about this weekend, feel free to shoot us a DM on social media. We'll uh, we'll be kind of bipping all over the city. Um, it's We hope y'all enjoyed this week's draft. Don't forget, you can vote and win a care package from our friends just by participating on our social media at stoned underscore appetite. Until next week, we will be back in action. We will still be talking about Food and Wine Classic throughout the summer. We're going to have some chefs as well as event promoters, folks from Food and Wine Magazine. All of that and more will be guests in the coming weeks, but we would have been, uh, we can't miss a draft. That's like one of our best episodes every month. So we'll see who wins. Don't forget to make the anonymous faces so no one will vote specifically based off of uh, because somebody's playing favorites or whatever. But until next week, y'all stay high, stay hungry. Roll through Rhino. I don't know what to say. Um... Shitty movie taste. <laughs> Shitty movie taste. <laughs> Cheers! Cheers. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs>